What do you think are the most important parts of the golf swing? Well, in today's video, we've got golf professional and YouTube legend, Peter Finch, sharing his best tips for the swing that are really gonna help you. We're here at the Full Swing Studios in San Diego. Let's get to it. Mr. Finch, we are reunited after a long, long time. We are. You've joined us in sunny California. Mm -hmm. But we're inside today because it is, it's, I nearly said it, but it's throwing down a rain outside. It's the opposite of sunny California right it now. Is. But, you know, is it, it's technically a desert around it. It needs a bit of rain, it? Doesn't needs it? A it little does, bit. yes, there's, it does. You know, we want the grass to grow, don't we? We are Lots golfers, we want the trees to be in <laughs> full bloom and yes. all the rest of it, you know, so don't mind a bit of rain. It's exactly. Fine. So we're in the Full Swing Studios here in Carlsbad, and Pete is going to share with us today his favourite swing drills. Pete, your golf swing is a thing of beauty. <laughs> it works sometimes, <laughs> but you're going to share a, a few things with irons and hopefully a couple of things with drivers for the viewers to, to give them some value today. Okay, cool. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, I don't know who is watching this, so please bear in mind that generally these tips are to take in a wide variety of golfers. So I would always suggest checking out a good PJ professional, <laughs> such as me and my golf they have a fantastic website that you can go to they've not instructed me to say that but i've been on there and i would give it a solid eight out of ten pay the that's man. good pay the eight man. is good there you go okay so, let's talk irons then pete <laughs> what we'll do is i think what well, probably the best thing to do is probably give a couple of drills but backward chain this because we, we all know like within a golf swing if a player comes to you, you could find a fix anywhere within that swing. But I think it's essential really to get off to a decent start and then things might fall into place anyway. Mm -hmm. So kind of always start usually with strike is absolutely key, uh, ball direction, how those two things kind of combine. So within this particular set of drills, we're assuming that the golfer has the ability to get club on ball and then everything else, mm -hmm. well, that's all for debate. <laughs> so first thing we really want to check to begin with is that the goal swing is getting off to a decent start with the takeaway. Mm -hmm. And for me, there's just a few very, very simple checkpoints. You know, we all know like a lot of golfers can have some funky takeaways and still make some good moves. But if there are a few things in place, it does make the rest of the technique, you know, a hell of a lot easier. Absolutely. What I really want to see to begin with is the takeaway to be nice and wide, but also when the club head reaches parallel, when it's in line with the hands, when viewed from behind, we just have the leading edge of the club matching spine angle. So we have this club face in a square position at that part of the swing. Because, you know, there are... I'm just a grabbing a prop here. Yeah, yeah, I might yeah. poke you a little bit as you're doing these things. <laughs> Absolutely. So kind of here, this position here. So we have the spine angle still tilted over the ball. So we know I've maintained the posture. I'm not lifted up and out of it. And also leading edge when that matches spine angle, that's a very easy reference point. Now what that means is that club is still square to the target that we're aimed at. Mm -hmm. Really simply, if you can get into that position, you've started the swing, you started the whole motion in an effective way. Just, just that one more time for us, mm -hmm. Pete, because I just want to just pull out a couple of things there which are really important. You mentioned it just, as Pete does this, you'll notice how much he's turned pretty, pretty early mm -hmm. in the golf swing, and you'll notice how both arms are relatively straight. It really helps get the club in a good position if it's being driven by this here, such a key yeah, component. Yeah. So would you recommend that people just swing, rehearse and look? I mean, what, what I tend to do is obviously this is a, the start point of the swing. If we can get to this position, it makes things easier. But if you can get to this type of position, we can almost start to practice what the impacts would be like. Mm -hmm. Like the simplest drill here, it's just like a little kind of half swing drill. As we take it up, got the body turn, check club face, back to the ball, set up, and then just repeat that position and just turn through. And literally with a seven iron, all I'm trying to do here is chip it down target line. 100 yards, that's it. 100 yards. Because people tend to, when they're coming into club, when they're coming into impact, you know, the club face can be in a lot of weird and wonderful positions. It's very hard to change the club face angle from here to here. So it gives a goal for an idea of what a square club face mm. actually feels like an impact. And often, if you can get here, and you can get here with a square club face, you can start to train the body to get into that position at impact. Yeah. You know, sometimes you don't have to mess around with the rest of the swing. Mm -hmm. It's an ideal world, obviously, but if you can get that, get that key component in the takeaway, then you can get a decent impact. Turning it away, turning in, square up the club face. 
Does You'll notice these shots as well, low, and the first one was drawing a little bit. Most golfers will struggle with the opposite. They'll hit it high and weak, but this is just showing the strength of the face as well. Exactly, so and, and, and that's what it's all about. I mean, that was a kind of slightly toey strike, but you know, we're, not bothered about, we're not bothered about distance here. And you can do this with any club. I mean, what I tend to like to do kind of with lessons is if they are struggling with direction, they're struggling with strike, this is a great way to get the swing off to a good start. But let's say we do this with a 60 degree wedge mm -hmm. or a 54 degree wedge. Yeah. With a few modifications, all of a sudden they will go away from the session there with a short range pitch shot. Yeah. So they can train, they can practice and add to their arsenal of kind of yeah. technique as well. So it. it's a very, very simple start, but you know, the, <laughs> the, the best goal swings generally are the most repeatable and the most repeatable actions are the most simple. We talk all the time about how when we're giving someone a golf lesson, we're really giving backswing lessons. Mm. And this is the perfect place to start because if they get this correct, they've got a chance from there. But I think, look, just the one thing, just set up again. Mm -hmm. What I really liked about Pete when he did this drill, just go back for me. So he's obviously rehearsing that. He mentioned about getting to impact. So as he goes to impact now, he'll obviously turn and unwind his body. But look what he did with the club face. He squared the face up. Mm -hmm. So many golfers will come in like this mm -hmm. when they go back to impact. They'll think about getting the hips and their chest and the weight into the lead leg. They'll think about turning to the target, but they won't turn the club face and square it up. Yeah, That's uh, crucial. And like I said, this, this, is a, this is a key place to start because everything is, everything is related to club face, everything is related to strike. Yeah. You know, whatever change you make within the golf swing, it's so you can deliver it in a way which sends the ball somewhere where you want yeah. it to go. It's, it's as simple as that. And like I said, if you're here and you turn into impact and that ball pops off to the right hand side, you know that from here to here, there is a, there's a problem with squaring club face. Yeah. So again, you can look at that straight away. Really simple. Yeah, a really lot of simple. golfers overlook that, but the earlier you can fix your golf swing, you know, the last thing you want to be doing is trying to fix it in transition. The earlier you can do it in the swing, the better really. Number two. Number two. We can build on from this point. Yep. Because like you said, you, a lot of the lessons that you give are backswing related. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons for that is that's a part of the swing that we can control. Mm -hmm. You know, coming into impact, body movements can break down. And sometimes that's not to do with technique, that's just to do with body types and like physically mm -hmm. how you kind of use your body. If there's a deficiency somewhere within muscular, skeletal, whatever, you can try and make changes, but sometimes it won't work because yes. you physically can't do it. With the backswing, because it's a more controlled motion, you can see these things easier. Mm. So if we can control takeaway and we can get into this position, actually, from that point, we should be able to make a rotation. We should be able to make a turn away from target and we should be able to control that as well. But this is the key part. Because if you don't get this, and sorry if I keep banging on about it for I something it. which is quite it's simple. It's very important, by the way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this, so this is the thing. It's, like, it, it's simple, it's very straightforward, it's amazing how many people don't do this yeah. because they're worried about things which yeah. look different. They're, they're worried about things that they've, you know, we know this, like they've yeah. watched the videos and maybe put something into their swing that is unnecessary because of this point here. Yeah. So if I do keep banging on about it, I'm, let's, I apologize. Let, let's back him so, up a little bit more here because yeah. I think the one thing that someone watching this they might go, yeah, well, yeah, okay, okay, Pete, yeah, I know that's where the club should go. Mm -hmm. But actually, the fact that you are so specific about it, a lot of golfers will look at this and go, it's too simple, it's too easy, but actually, to your point. I need to shallow my club exactly, on the way down, to I need point, to flex the wrist. They should be doing this and they should be looking at this first. It's massively important. On, on, honestly, it's, it, the, more, the more and more like, you know, because one thing I like about you guys, and one thing which I do want to see in pretty much every coach is, you're always learning, you're always like mm. trying new things, you're always kind of expanding your knowledge base. Like the more and more that I've, I've given lessons, the more and more I look at the goal swing, the more important yeah. the realization is of where the club face is throughout the swing. That's the most important thing. Driver. Because, yeah, it's, it's kind of like, if you're, if you're thinking about something like a shallow in the swing or whatever, mm. that is completely meaningless unless the club face is where you want it to yeah. be. Yeah, yeah. You can shallow the absolute crap out of a golf club, but yeah. if that club face is going to be wide open at impact. You'll be hitting me from there. <laughs> exactly. So th that is not where to start. We need to start with club face. So again, I'm sorry, I will keep banging on about it. It's good, it's good. However, it's important. What about the takeaway? Can we talk about the takeaway? <laughs> 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 so with, with this takeaway, so we've got the club face, we've got that kind of nailed down. Now from this point, we've already got our body pretty much into a position that's two thirds of the way through its backswing rotation. 
you know, from here, it's a little bit more to kind of get up to the top of the swing. But again, a lot of the work has been completed within this takeaway phase. Now, from here, we have a club face which is parallel. Uh, we have a club shaft which is parallel to the ground. We have the wrists because they're in this position; they're already slightly set. Mm -hmm. Now, this is going to be key. If you're in a backswing position, which you're kind of rigid into this position, and you have no relaxed set within those wrists, the rest of the backswing is going to be a little bit more of an issue. So, once we get to kind of this position, all I really want to get people doing is pointing the club up at the sky and completing the rotation. Okay, now again, sounds super simple. We're on plane here, club face is in the right position. If we hinge those wrists upwards, as we rotate, we should have the left arm pretty much across the shoulder line for a right-handed golfer, and that club face should be matching back of, left wrist, back of the left wrist, back of the left arm. Let's just show that on camera so they can, they can see that. So if you go to that point, so you go to that halfway um, from here now, so if you go to the top of the backswing. Yeah, so it's, this is a combination movement. So I'm not doing this and then turning. I'm hinging and rotating. It's more of a blended. So yeah. things that Pete was saying, he wants the left arm pretty much matching the shoulder plane here. And if I come behind here, we want the, the leading edge to be running exactly the same as this lead forearm. This is now a square face. Mm -hmm. This is more of an open face. Mm -hmm. This is more of a closed, closed face, face here. Yeah. Key components, real key. Okay, let's get into some, some driver Drives. stuff then. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, the yeah. driver we'll talk about, because obviously the driver, we, we often talk about the driver as a specialist club. Mm. Mm. You know, you're hitting this potentially 10 to 14 times around, depending on the golf course that you play. And the amount of golfers who come to us for lesson, they have sometimes two different golf swings. They swing it one way with the iron and swing it one way with the driver. Mm -hmm. And there's certainly some things that you can do differently. Because yeah. this is a really, it's really about getting in play, but look, we want to get it down as far as we can get it, it as well. But you're, it is a specialist club. It's a very, it, it, there's a lot of things within the golf swing that you can transfer and you, know, you can adapt. But if you think about what you're doing with the driver, it's essentially a completely different club because the ball is not on the ground. So you can move this club in a way which is completely in contrast to your iron. Your iron when you strike it, your wedges when you strike it, generally you want it to be moving down, hitting the ball, and then it will bruise the turf, take a divot, whatever. With the driver, that is the opposite of what we want to happen. We don't want this to be hitting the ground. Mm. You know, we have this space around and underneath the ball. We have more ability, we have more of a chance to manipulate this club than we do with a lot of others. So therefore, the technique that you use fundamentally will change. Mm. So really what I try and kind of emphasize most of the time is set up and how you actually adapt your body to the ball that is the first thing we've got to do. Because if I set up to this as though I'm going to hit a wedge, ball position in the middle of my stance, fundamentally, <laughs> I have to then adapt my swing to make sure this ball isn't skied, to make sure it's going down towards the target. Again, it's just like, I don't... <laughs> <laughs> it's some frustration in peace, it, I think. It, yeah. it, it, it is frustrating because I know that a lot of people kind of watching this will, will want to know and will want to understand like massively like technical things. Mm. And they'll want to try and develop a, a deep knowledge and a deep understanding of the golf swing. But if we're looking at practicality of getting out on the golf course and actually playing some decent golf, none of that matters. You can be as knowledgeable as you want. If you're not getting set up to your driver correctly, it's completely pointless. So getting that first initial setup for me is absolutely so, fundamental. Yeah. I want to just tap into this a little bit because a lot of the viewers will go, okay, well, I know I should have the ball forward. I know I create tilts, should create the tilts and get my spine sort of leaning away. Yet they still come to us for coaching and still are not doing that. So they know where they need to be. A lot of them do, but they're still not in the position well, that, that is, is going to help I mean, them. We all know that like, if a golfer goes to the driving range, setup is not something that they work on. Mm. Like they might do, like the, the few of you out there, God bless your little souls, you might be there and grinding on your setup, but generally people will get to the swing and they want to, they get to the range and they want to work on their swing. Yeah. It's natural, it's perfectly understandable. Yeah. There's very few people who you will see spending an hour with 50 balls grinding on setup. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the thing is though as well, because Pete's exactly right on this, because you go to a PJ Tour event, LPGA Tour event, if you get on the driving range, you are watching them calibrating setup. Alignment sticks on the ground, ball position, alignment, mm. 
posture checking. That's all we do with Aaron. You know, that, so the videos that they, they, his caddy sends through every Monday and Tuesday are we are making sure his posture's in good it, place. It, now, you do need to do oh. work on the swing, but you need to just be mindful when you're doing it. But you need to, the first it, part. It's getting yourself set up for success. Yeah. You know, you, you don't... It, it, it amazes me, and it, it's understandable again why, because people do want to work on technique more than anything. But we are playing here a target orientated sport. And I could probably count on three hands, maybe, <laughs> the amount of lessons over like maybe the last 10 years that I've had who spend time working on aim. Just, just think about that yeah, for a second. Yeah, yeah. We are a target orientated sport and very few golfers work on aim. Yep. Is that not the most mental thing you've ever heard yep. in your life? Yep. Now, this, is what, this is why golf drive people mad. Yeah. This is why everyone who plays golf, I think, is a little bit kind of on the edge. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because like, if you go to any other sport, if you go to an archer and you say, do you work on your aim? <laughs> of course they do. I've never, never thought about that. Exactly, <laughs> yo. Exactly, yeah, yeah. But, but this is the thing. So, so many golfers, if they were archers and they pull the bow out and they set the quiver, they're going down there and they set up over here, you would rightly say, what are you doing? Mm. But yet many golfers, they'll get set up, they'll be aiming over here and they'll be like, oh, that's, that's just the way I aim. Mm. But if you're aiming over here, you have to hit it that way to get it back to target. And they come in and say, oh, I'm slicing it. Yeah, yeah, Brian, <laughs> you are. <laughs> because you're trying to get it back to your target. Yeah. So working with alignment sticks, and again, I think we're going on a bit here, but it's all good. like when you're talking about um, kind of body motions and all the rest of it. This is why the top pros, this is why, you know, you work with these guys more than I do, but this is why elite athletes, they will spend so much more time on their setup because then their body motions become simpler. Mm. If you aim or you're incorrectly aligned to your target, you have to then adapt your motions to get the ball back to where you want it to go. Like with Aaron, because his setup, you can see his setup, he's just like, he's train trapped it's on vertical, everything. Yeah. So all he needs to do then is put his swing on it, and if anything goes wrong, he knows that it's not the way he's lined up to it. And, and, and to add to this as well, if we're playing golf with somebody and we want to help them, we're only going to go into the setup. We'll do a few things. We'll say ball position, we'll say alignments, we'll say tilts, just try this, just close the shoulders off a little bit. You will definitely go down that route. Mm. Um, interested, so how would the driver then set up then? Just go through how yeah. you would calibrate it yourself. How, how can you guarantee, for the, for, the, for the few who really want to do mm. it, how can they guarantee that they're going to get into a great setup with the driver? So all, for me, always start setting up feet together. Okay? Nice. So feet together, literally the ball intersecting. Could I uh, grab your alignment stick, please, sir? Appreciate that. Thank you very much. <laughs> so if this goes down here, lovely baby blue alignment stick there as well. I've <laughs> seen that before. <laughs> so if you start here with your feet together, we know that the ball, we know the relation for the body to the ball. Yeah. So this is in the middle of the feet, it's in the middle of the sternum, it's centralized, okay? Because we want to hit up on the ball with a driver, this means that our swing center needs to be behind. So very simply, if you want to get your swing center, which is roughly kind of where your sternum is, all we need to do here is take a step to the right. Our swing center is now behind the ball, okay? Now, what I tr tend to do, because a lot of people don't do this, is if you can get set up in this position, if you fan your lead foot out here, we know that ball position is going to be inside that left heel, okay? Then if you take a step, we know that we've stepped behind the ball, our swing center is behind. So when we talk about swing center, I, I don't know what you guys do with graphics, yeah, yeah. but- do, do Have a go with the yeah, arc, yeah, I mean, show with the arc, demonstrate it. Roughly, the swing is going to be working in a circular motion around the body. Please don't get into the comments and go crazy. We all know that that's not the case. <laughs> but roughly, the swing is moving in a yeah. circular motion. The bottom point of that circle is near your swing center. If your swing center stays behind the ball, that means you're going to be hitting on an upward angle, on an upward arc. This is why it's so essentially different than an iron. You want to be over the top of the ball with an iron so you can get your swing center on or just after. With driver, we want it behind so you can hit with an upward arc. Sounds simple, doesn't it? Yep. It is. <laughs> Do it. Let's hit, let's, hit, let's, let's, hit, let's hit one. Let's, let's have a look at that. So we'll actually put in a... I feel, I feel like it's a warm-up again. <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we were talking prior to this on the video about, like, you know, swing coaching and, like, these lessons and stuff and about how, you know, let's, let's make sure that we're not just, like, blabbering on. <laughs> yeah. no, no, it's all great stuff. So we're in here. So this is it. So all I need to do here to really 
make sure that my arc is on the way up. Mm -hmm. It's just being the knowledge that I want to keep my center behind the ball. Okay. Like in, in the most simple terms. Obviously with the driver, a lot can go wrong, but we just want to stay behind. <laughs> oh, damn. Back stiffened up there. Mm -hmm. Strike on that. And that oh. shape is something that the majority of the amateurs watching this would love to see, that little bit of a right to left. But I think one key thing, just do that again for us, Pete. Oh, is, and this is problem. so important when people do this because it feels unfamiliar. So if you, t if you take your setup, middled you like that? that? I middled that, yeah, I was you quite surprised. That. What is so important, you'll see Pete does this excellent from face on. He keeps his upper body back. Mm -hmm. And most golfers, when it, it does, when the ball does go forward, they just tend to reach with the upper body and get the yeah. shoulders too open. But you're really making sure that you are like well behind it here. It, what, what a lot of people struggle with, certainly when they get a little bit more behind the ball like this, they automatically want to move towards the ball. I mean, that's, that's fair enough. Mm. You know, if you're hitting something, you want your body to be more towards what Feels you're natural, doing. Feels natural, doesn't it? Exactly, yeah, 100%. Now, if you move behind like this, you just need to make sure that your spine angle still has that tilt away from the target. It's a little bit counterintuitive time. You might feel a long way away from the ball, but having it in that position, that's what's going to help, again, keep behind as you strike. And see how far Pete's head is now back behind the golf yeah. ball, real key component. stay there, stay there. Because a lot of you now, as we were saying, just exactly that, they're going, hang a bit, the ball's over here somewhere. Mm -hmm. I need to do this. Exactly. Oh, now I can see the ball, it feels more comfortable. But that now is just so strange for a lot of golfers, isn't it? Exactly. This, exactly. this is where you, you do a great job. This is it. where you treat it like a specialist shot because mm. it has to be You're like, right, okay, this, this ball needs to feel way in front yeah. of me so I can launch it. And if you've got that mindset, it's another key component. Yeah. And again, like, as we just mentioned there with the shot, this is why I'm being so pedantic about this kind of thing. Because if you're in here and you move towards your kind of trail shoulder comes up, your shoulders start to angle off to the left-hand side. Your swing is a lot more likely to start to follow that kind of path. Yeah. So again, you'll get people that, oh, I'm slicing it, I'm slicing it. Mm -hmm. oh, why do I need to work on setup? Could be here. <laughs> get rid of that. Exactly, yeah. So. Again, so I love this. So, he's, right. so as you say, feet together, fan the left foot. Yeah, just routine, the right straight into back. it. Make sure your body stays behind. It can be very, um, what's the word? Like if you're, if you're doing this kind of like for the, the first time, it can be a little bit monotonous. Like a little checklist that you're going through, isn't yeah, it almost? And, and like if you're doing this kind of like at a driving range, it can be, I mean, let's face it, if you work with your setup at a driving range, it can be boring. There's, yeah. no, there's no point kind of like denying it. You know, yeah. you're working on static motion here. Mm. This is before you even start, so it can be a bit dull. And especially when people start to smash drivers around you and get all excited. <laughs> it's having the kind of confidence in understanding that working on these aspects of technique, because setup is technique, that's going to allow you to then hit those good shots. Yeah. So, it's like the warm up before they get the game of golf, isn't it? Important, mm. but a lot of people won't. Yeah, exactly. Obviously do it. exactly. So, we got those feet together, we got that little fan out, we have that big step. One of it further. <laughs> We've got that kind of big step here. We understand that having that kind of right shoulder a little bit lower than the left will adapt that spine angle. And all I'm really trying to do here is get people to turn up to the top and maintain the swing center position behind the ball. As we move through impact, maintain behind the ball. That for me is absolutely key because then we can understand if they are making adjustments, they are making changes, at least we know we have that kind of movement system mm. that we can work then around and we can kind of adapt and we can change. But that's the, the first thing for me with that. most golfers anyway. Yeah, yeah. So, so let's go into that now. So obviously a great setup, as you say. Just is there a drill specific or is it just mainly a feel? Is it? I mean, we can, we can obviously adapt those kind of same drills and we can do exactly yeah, the same yeah. thing. Yeah. Again, if, we, if we're trying to keep it super simple. Yeah, yeah. If we're trying to keep it super simple. If people are struggling with the feeling of this, like the easiest way for me to kind of get this across is going through the setup routine, having the club across the chest, kind of that slight spine tilt there. We turn up to the top. If you can make sure that the butt end of the club, I've got another kind of alignment stick here. <laughs> You're doing the best drill in the world, aren't yeah, you? Yeah. The number one drilling golf this is. So if you can uh, turn up, to, so you've got this setup position here. Turn up to the top of the swing. If you can get the butt end of the grip pointing at the shaft, which is opposite your trail foot, you'll know that you've rotated and turned behind the ball. Yeah. Super simple. So, so, so just swing to the top normally. So I suppose the checkpoint for this is really, can you get your lead shoulder over your trail mm -hmm. leg? That's exactly what Pete's doing there. And again, it's, 
for me, if you, it, it depends what you focus on. Because like I say, trail shoulder, kind of over kind of yeah. that line, that's a reference point. I tend to use swing center mm -hmm. because it's a bit, in some ways, I know this might sound counterintuitive, it's a bit less specific. Yeah. You, because then you're moving more of your body. Mm -hmm. Like it's, you're thinking this, because you can't move your sternum. Yeah. You can just understand where it is in relation to the rest of your swing. So yeah, lead shoulder kind of over that foot. It's perfect. I, it. it's I like it. it. Okay, that's it. One more shot. <laughs> we saying well, the best, the best one. one. Look at that one. Yeah, loosened up a bit again. <laughs> oh, I love the, I'm ripping catalyst oh, up here. It's too strong <laughs> for that. <laughs> There we go. Oh, I just felt, yeah, just that left shoulder. Just wanted to get 301 carry. Is this, is this simulator? Uh, no, I'm, I mean, I'm getting warmed up. So, <laughs> I mean, we can, we can start to pound it a little bit more. Because, and again, we'll obviously we'll finish up because like people are kind of running late on the lunch breaks now. <laughs> the, that kind of um, swing, that kind of ball speed and all the rest of it. Coming through impact, there are things that I've worked on in my downswing. But because it's, because it's so fast, Real, realistically, I don't have any kind of control over what's happening here. You know, I might as well close my eyes and just kind of swing at it. But the backswing and that setup, and as we've spoken about, I know I'm in the best position possible for percentages to actually deliver that club in a position that's going to send it down towards target. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. Amazing work. Now we are just enough. about to. Hey, I'm, I'm, so, I'm really sorry, by the way. I, we'll, I, we'll, I cut this down. we'll cut this down. We'll cut this down to about be a three minute 12 video. minutes. This, is, this has been about what? 30. Is it Wednesday? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've just oh, missed, we, you've we, missed we, Scott's down. <laughs> it doesn't need to be complicated, though. No. What Pete's talked through really? there is so important. So, look, hope you guys enjoyed that. Make sure you go and follow Pete if you don't already. And check out the lesson that Piers is going to give Pete right now with his irons by clicking right here. Thanks, guys. <laughs>